Hej, jag heter Anders Isberg och jag ska visa hur man binder fingrar i rävsvans. My name is Anders Isberg. Är and I'm going to show you how to tie fishing flies using foxtail material. Foxtail is quite a new fly tying material and it makes excellent hair wings. Its main characteristics are its mobility in water which attracts the fish and its durability. I'll now tie some flies for salmon and sea trout from the Swedish Fox Flies series. And I'll begin with a pattern black and gold fox. Tie in the thread on the tube and wind back in open turns down to the soft rubber sleeve, which will be fastened to our tube by a couple of firm turns of tying thread. Take a bundle of red orange flashy yarn, which is cut at an angle, and tie it in with about one centimeter extending out backwards. Now tie in a thin piece of the same yarn we used for the tail, about 20 centimeters long. We will be using this to form the butt. Wind the yarn backwards a couple of turns and then forward again to make a nice butt. This will also cover the tying in of our tail. An easy way to thin the yarn is to brush the cut piece with a toothbrush or something similar. Now it's time to tie in the body. We will be using a 15 centimeter long piece of gold oval tinsel, medium width. Now take a prepared hot orange cock hackle with fibers of suitable length and tie it in on its end using the cross winding technique and fold the excess hackle stem backwards along the fly body. Tie down the hackle stem along the fly body taking it only about halfway down the body and cut off any excess. For the fly body, use a length of wide flat plastic gold tinsel, approximately 40 centimeters long. The end of the tinsel is tied in just behind the body hackle with a couple of firm turns of well waxed thread. Then wind the tinsel using firm but even tension in close butting turns, close but not overlapping, down to the red tag where you use even more tension as you turn back with the tinsel and return to a point just behind the body hackle. Tie it off with a couple of firm turns of your waxed thread. A little trick we employ at this stage is to wind four or five turns of waxed thread behind the body hackle on the newly wound fly body. This helps to hold the turns of body hackle in place, preventing it sliding on the slippery tinsel body. Now fasten your hackle pliers on the body hackle and start with two close turns just on the top of the waxed thread we laid on the fly body. Then wind the hackle using two open turns back down the body, making sure that when you finish the hackle covers half the length of the body. When you have reached this point with the body hackle, keep the tension on the hackle and with the other hand wind the tinsel. First wind two turns of tinsel on the end section of the body. You meet the body hackle on the third turn and continue winding the tinsel forward to the point where the body hackle is fastened and tie off. Now you have around five turns of tinsel all together along the fly body.
Now take the prepared front hackle and tie it in with a couple of turns of wax thread just in front of the body hackle. Wind the front hackle forward with close turns at the same time as you double it by stroking all the fibres backwards before every turn and then tie it off. One way to measure the length you need for the front hackle is to use a loose piece of thread. Wind it instead of the hackle, remove it and use it as a gauge to determine the length of hackle you need to prepare. Now it's time to make the wing. The main principle of the Swedish Fox series is that the wings are tied with a small quantity of flashabu, together with several pieces of fox hair, each piece gradually increasing in length. Start to build the wing with two strands of silver holographic flash, which are tied in to form a V-shape with a one centimetre space between the strands where they reach the red butt. Then you tie in a prepared piece of yellow fox hair on the top of the flash. The length should reach just to the end of the tag. Put a new set of flash of the same sort as we tied in previously. This time make the strands one to two centimetres longer. Tie in the next piece of fox hair. This time we're using hot orange. Make it a little bit longer than the previous piece. Spread the hair at the fastening point using your thumbnail, so when seen from above it becomes wider than the yellow one. For the tying in of the fox hair you can use different methods. Either you can use the stack method, whereby every new bundle of fox hair is placed on the top of the previous one, or you can use the spread method, whereby using your thumbnail you spread the hair of every new piece so when seen from above, it's slightly wider than the previous one. The last piece to be tied in can be tied backwards forwards, that is, tied in with the fibres extending away from the body, and then turned and tied in over its own root end. This can contribute greatly to the fly's action and movement when in the water. Finally, tie in the upper black bundle of hair. We're going to use the forward-backwards method. To make the tying easier when using this method, first put in a couple of semi-firm turns of thread to hold the hair in place. Now use your thumbnail to spread the hair just enough to cover the underlying piece of hair, and then tie a couple of firm turns of thread to lock it in place. Finally, Bring the wing backwards along the body. Spread it a little to place some hair down the sides of the tube and then stretch the hair firmly and tie it off with a couple of hard turns of well waxed thread.
take two strands of dark holographic flash. Tie them in on the side of the black wing and cut the strands to different lengths. Finally, with the black and gold fox, we tie in four to six peacock hurls on top of the black wing. The length of the hurl could stretch a little beyond the fox hair. Finish with two turns of well waxed thread, whip finish. Cut the thread and seal with two or three coats of head cement or varnish. Well, we've come to the part where we prepare the hackles for the flies. I do my preparation for the fox flies in two different ways. The body hackle in one way and the front hackle in another. The body hackle is prepared by removing most of the fluff at the bottom of the hackle stem with your fingers. Retain a little of the fluff for the first turns when you're winding the hackle on the fly. This is the front hackle for those flies which use cock hackle. Here we use the lower part of the hackle, that part which is close to the hackle root. Just as for the body hackle, you remove most of the fluff at the bottom, but you save enough fluff for the last two turns. Note that hooks and tubes with different diameters demand different lengths of fluff, enough for the two turns. Cut the hackle making it three to four centimeters in length. Strip the end you will be tying in, leaving a clean stem of some two to three millimeters. This is how to prepare a front hackle for blue and silver, red and silver, and orange and gold. Don't save any fluff on the hackles for these flies, but use that part of the hackle which is closest to the fluff. Anders usually cuts off some extra fibres from the root and point end on the same side of the hackle that will be facing the hook shank or tube when the hackle is wound. For the wings of the foxhair flies, Anders first chooses the colours he will use in the wing. Then the bundles are cut to size and prepared. Finally, the flies are tied. He always ties the wings in bundles, 
even if he uses the same colour. Anders always measures them lengthwise, so that the bundle at the bottom is the shortest one, and each subsequent layer increases in length. The actual size of each bundle of hair varies with the size of the fly and the number of bundles it will contain. As a rough guide for a finished fly of about 6 to 7 centimetres, each bundle should vary by about 1 centimetre in length. Ja, då ska vi binda en mindre rävfluga. I det här fallet är det mönstret Blue and Silver Fox. Den passar utmärkt för soligt väder och måttlig vattenföring. Och jag använder en laxkrok i storlek 1. Fasten your thread on the hook close to the eye and wind back in open turns until you're at a point between the barb and the hook point. Tie in a length of holographic silver or gold tinsel and with a few turns create a neat tag. Take a bundle of red-orange flashy yarn, which you've cut on a taper, and tie it in with about one centimetre sticking out backwards beyond the hook bend. Now take a thin piece of the same yarn you used when tying the tag. Make this yarn about 20 centimetres long. Remember the tip we gave you about using a toothbrush when we were tying the black and gold fox. Wind the yarn a couple of times backwards and then forward again to finish at a position level with the point of the hook and tie it off with a couple of turns of tying thread. Then you tie in a 15 centimeter long piece of silver oval tinsel, medium width. Leave an excess corresponding to the length of the fly body sticking out when you fasten in the tinsel with a couple of firm turns close to the red butt. Prepare a light blue cock hackle with fibres of suitable length and tie it in using the cross winding technique. Fold the excess hackle stem back along the fly body and tie down. Make sure you leave about 7 millimeters in front of the body hackle for the front hackle, wing and head. You also need a little gap between the head and eye, either for the turl knot or any other knot you may use to avoid rubbing or damaging the fly head. For the fly body you use a length of wide flat holographic silver tinsel. We've got about 30 centimetres for this fly. One end of the tinsel is tied in just behind the body hackle with a couple of firm turns of well waxed thread. The other end is wound using firm tension down to the red butt. Remember to make sure your turns of tinsel butt together as neatly as you can make them without having them overlap. As you turn to come back up the body with the tinsel, increase the tension slightly and butt the turns, don't overlap them, stopping just behind the body hackle. Now is the time to wind four or five turns of thread behind the body hackle on top of the newly wound fly body. This not only locks the tinsel in place, but also helps our body hackle to stay in place. Fasten the hackle pliers on the body hackle stem and starting with two close turns just on the top of the waxed wraps on the fly body, wind the hackle using two open turns back along half the length of the hook shank. When you have reached this point with the body hackle, keep the tension on the hackle and with the other hand bring the tinsel forward to meet the hackle. First wind two turns of tinsel on the end section of the body, 
meeting the body hackle on the third turn and continue winding the tinsel forward to the point where the body hackle is fastened. You should end up with around five turns of tinsel altogether. Now take the prepared front hackle and tie it in with a couple of turns of well waxed thread just in front of the body hackle. Wind the front hackle forward using close butting turns at the same time as you stroke the fibres backwards before every turn. Now it's time to make the wing. All the Swedish fox flies have the wings tied with a limited quantity of flashaboo, together with several pieces of fox hair, each piece slightly longer than the last. Start to build the wing with two strands of silver holographic flash, which are tied in to form a V-shape with a one centimetre space between the strands where they reach the red butt. You can see that just a couple of turns of waxed thread is all that is needed to hold them in place. The strips of flash are then folded backwards and fastened with a couple more turns. The lengths of the folded strands are measured against the strands that were originally tied. Then tie in a prepared piece of white fox hair on the top of the flash. It should be long enough to reach to the end of the red butt. A trick for building a nice tapered head is to cut off the excess from the first piece of fox hair, leaving about one and a half to two millimetres extending towards the hook eye. This makes a solid foundation for the next piece of hair you tie in. Always lock in each layer of the wing with firm turns of well waxed thread. Occasionally use a half hitch at the end of a couple of firm turns. This not only increases the durability of the wing but also assists in the tying as even firm turns of waxed thread can work loose when tying wings. Tie in some more flash just as we did earlier but leave the strands one to two centimetres longer. Normally, the wing consists of three bundles, but we've chosen to tie a variant with one additional bundle in yellow. You can make your own variants of the Swedish fox patterns using as many or as few bundles as you want in making the wing. Tie in the bundle of red hair, which again is cut slightly longer than the previous layer, in our case the yellow hair. The last bundle, which is blue, is tied in without turning the wing, as with the black and gold fox. Instead, lay the bundle in the same way as the previous layers, tie it in with a couple of turns, and by using your thumbnail, spread the blue hair to each side of the red. Tie in using a couple of firm turns of thread and cut off the excess. The difference between doing this and using the backwards-forwards method 
is not very great as regards the mobility of the fly. Finally, tie in some thin strips of silver angel hair. Cut them to different lengths, fold and cut again as with the other layers of flash. Whip finish, making a nicely tapered head and seal with head cement or varnish at least twice. Take it out. Take it out. Yes. How Well, now I'll show you how I tie the hackles and the wings on the foxflies. Now we'll show you how to fasten the body hackle with cross winding, also known as figure of eight winding. Put the prepared body hackle on its end, so the hackle fibres point away from you and the root towards you. Place the upper side of the hackle towards the head of the fly. The part where the side fibres of the cock hackle begin should end up just above the shank or the tube body. Tie in the flat plastic tinsel with firm turns of well waxed tying thread where the body hackle is tied in. Then wind the tinsel using close butting turns, not allowing any turns to overlap. Work from the fastening point toward the butt and back again. Apply a little bit more tension when you turn at the butt. Wind the body hackle so the first two turns are put over the extra turns of waxed thread, which are on the tinsel body, just behind the fastening point of the body hackle. First, wind the body hackle along half the length of the body. Then. Keep the tension on the hackle with the hackle pliers at the same time as you wind two open turns of the body ribbing with the other hand. On the third turn, meet and cross the hackle with one turn, trapping it against the body. While maintaining tension on the ribbing, you can release your grip on the hackle pliers and then increase the tension a bit more on the ribbing before continuing to a position in front of the body hackle. By zigzagging with a rib, you can work it through the hackle fibres in open turns. 
Stretch and tighten the rib a bit extra, just when you tie it in. First, wind a few firm and well waxed turns while you still keep the tension with the other hand. And then put your thumbnail on the rib so it presses hard against the hook or the tube. Now apply further firm turns of thread while maintaining the tension on the rib at the same time. After you remove your thumb, give a couple of extra firm turns of thread to lock the whole thing in place before cutting off the excess. Take the prepared front hackle and fasten the 3mm prepared end with a couple of turns of thread just in front of the body hackle. Fasten the hackle pliers at the free root end of the hackle and then wind the hackle by doubling it, that is, stroking the side fibres backwards at every turn until no more side fibres remain. Fasten the clean hackle stem firmly with two or three turns of waxed thread. Take two or more strands of flash and sight them so they're about one centimetre apart. Place the strands horizontally on the top of the hook shank or tube and tie in with a couple of turns of thread so the longest flash strand stretches as far as the bundle hair which will be tied in above the flash. Then turn the strands, which point towards the head, backward over the fly body and tie in with a couple of turns of thread. Trim the length of these strands by stretching the flash and cut off with scissors so that they match the length of the first tied in and measured strands. The flash should form a V as seen from above. The first hair bundle is tied in so that the length matches the length of the fly body. The second flash is tied in a V, just like the first flash, but make it a little bit longer. The second hair bundle is slightly longer than the first bundle. The wing is made a little wider by pressing your thumbnail against the bundle after the first turns of locking thread, so you have the hair just outside that of the first bundle. This gives the wing more volume and the finished fly better movement in the water. A third bundle of flash can be put on the top. It's your decision.
finally, you can put some flash strands on each side, making sure they're of the same length as the wing bundle on the top, but in the same way as the other flash bundles, spaced apart. So there you are. Now it's your turn to try to bind. I hope you enjoyed learning how to tie some of the flies in the Swedish Foxfly series. I've given you the basics, and now it's your turn to try to tie the foxflies on your own. Good luck and good fishing.